Dr. Dana Tassone with participants in HFT 6228, discussing uh, Chapter 9, uh, Training and Development. Uh, one of my favorites. And, um, uh, you know that there are only uh, two languages in, in business. Uh, there's, there's statistics and there's finance. Those are the only two arguments that can be used to justify something uh, within an organization. In, in, uh, in HR practice, uh, just as is the case in, uh, in, in the field of psychology, um, it, practitioners have to, uh, not have to, should uh, use uh, statistical analysis, not fancy statistical analysis like we're using here, uh, should use statistical analysis um, in order to identify uh, the correlations and, and the outcomes um, associated with um, any intervention. And that's how they justify their existence. And, and from a financial standpoint, uh, the whole thing is about uh, cost and benefit. Um, what does it cost me to do something? And how do I benefit from it? So if I'm arguing, you know, oh, you know we've identified that you know, these things are, are, are correlated and, and they, uh, they are positive attributes that... Uh, that render the, the organization uh, in a position to be more successful and, and, and we feel that we would like to do this intervention, intervention A, and, and the cost of this intervention uh, will be X and the return from the intervention uh, will be Y. And, and our return on investment is, is Z number of months days, you know, months, years, years doesn't work too good. But, you know, if I can give you a return on your investment of X, and if I can give you a payback within a year, let's say, uh, a boss is going to say, hmm, you know, maybe it'll work uh, as long as uh, the, the intrinsic aspects of the benefits serve uh, the mission and vision. And remember, we're talking about proactive organizations, not not some of the ones we've been discussing, and uh, it'll serve the, the, the benefit of the organization. And that's the justification uh, for a training department. And, then, and, and of course, uh, people are quick to say, uh, training is a worthwhile investment. Uh, it will enhance um, <clears throat> uh, retention. It'll, it'll, it'll boost morale, uh, and, and some people, forward-thinking people, would say it'll even pro in, uh, 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 develop productivity. It'll enhance productivity. It'll increase productivity in, in the workplace. Well, how do you know? Um, you know, that's, that's what my bosses would always say. You know, if I were to say those things, you know, how do you know? And, and I would have to present uh, specific, uh, logical presentation of numbers. And, and the numbers are the language that everybody understands in business. So that's the case with training. So if, if uh, and in my case, I was always, always very fortunate to work for very proactive, um, uh, large organizations. And, and I was also uh, uh, very fortunate to, uh, to meet and, and work with uh, really the top of the line. Uh, trainers in our field at that time. Um, my guess is it was uh, a matter of um, like thinking. You know, it's a, if I'm a trainer and, and, and you're a trainer and, and we meet and, and this vibe goes off, uh, we are like-minded people. And uh, so I always had the, the, just the greatest training managers and, uh, and I never, ever stopped training. Um, I would uh, conduct, I conducted training programs all throughout my corporate career. And as you know, beyond that, when I entered academia, I, I continued to uh, 
to do that as a professional trainer. It's um, it's just my purpose. Yeah. It's not my purpose. I, I can't tell you my purpose because that's a secret. But it's it's a big factor that motivates me in life. So, in out of training department. What does a training department do? Well, you know, anybody would say, oh, train. And, and the answer is yes, um, but more than that, uh, what they do is, is they, uh, they design, they develop, uh, they, um, uh, in some cases, implement and, 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 and evaluate training programs. Well, what's a training program? A training program is a sequence of, of modules um, that render an overall training mission. <clears throat> and, and, and what is each module intended to do? Each module is intended to achieve about three goals, three objectives um, uh, for each one. And do your trainers provide all the training? Answer is no. Uh, you, in, in, the, the best bang for the buck in, in the training biz is to do what they call train the trainer. And so the training managers that I had uh, working with me, that was their, that was their goal. Uh, they did a lot of great training themselves. They were the masters, no doubt about it. But th they, their worth, their value to the organization uh, was to teach other people to be trainers. Um, and the, the more developed people become in that aspect, then the more they can impart knowledge. So why do trainers exist? Well, the trainers only exist if to, to, to solve a problem. And what's a problem? A problem is a, is a negative gap between the standards for performance and, and, and actual performance. That's a problem. When that happens, that's a problem. So what's the cause of the problem? Well, there could be a number of causes for the problem. I like to categorize them in simple classifications. Um, you know, it could be a, it could be a people problem. Uh, if it's a people problem, is that a training problem? No, not necessarily. Uh, it could be a material resources problem. Uh, something wrong with the, with the resources, the allocation, uh, the quality, uh, the quantity to get the job done. And in, in a lot of cases, uh, it could be a systems problem. Um, in most cases, really, a systems problem. There's something wrong with the system um, that's causing this negative gap. Now, let's say that, and all of this, of course, is in the chapter, and you're a grad student, so you don't need me to outline the chapter for you. I'm just sharing my thoughts. So, so if a problem is a negative gap between standards and actual performance, then uh, um, and you have a people problem, well, what kind of people problems could you have? Well, you could have a lot of people problems, but the one we're interested in from a training perspective is whether or not uh, there exists a, a competency gap. Uh, there's a gap in the skills, abilities, or knowledge uh, to meet the standard. And, and if that's the cause of our problem, uh, then we have a training problem. And how do we find that out? As the, the book tells you, we do that through a process called needs analysis or needs assessment. Um, and, and, and that's a, an analytical tool that we use uh, to, to take a, it starts with a symptom. It always starts with a symptom. I'm sure I've told you all this before. It starts with a symptom. And, and is that symptom the problem? Don't know. Uh, do the bosses think it's a problem? Yeah. They, they jump right on it. That's the problem. Uh, scenario in the vignette uh, tells you, I think it was about guest service index scores in a, in a logic facility. So uh, you have the symptoms, and then you have to conduct your, your analysis. And from that analysis, you deduce uh, the real problem, the root problem. Once you identify the problem, then you identify what's causing the problem, the real problem. And if the answer is it's a competency gap, then you have a need for a training intervention. If it's a material problem, organizational problem, systems problem, no need for training. And why do I say this? Well, because as the book tells you, I've, I've met so many uh, 
uh, training people. Uh, and as you know, you know, when times get tough economically, the first department to go is the training department. And, and uh, the first person to go is the training manager because he or she's getting the salary. And, and as the vignette shows you, um, a person who doesn't uh, doesn't understand the professional aspects of, of, of uh, problem identification and analysis will proceed. Uh, you know, they'll be told, you know, do a, you know, we have a problem, make a, you know, do a training program on this, and then they do the training program, and and then the problem persists, um, and then the the fault falls on the training manager and and the training staff, and of course, you know, the training manager and staff suffer the consequences. And the reality is that they didn't do a bad job. Uh, you had them, you the boss, you had them solving a problem. That was not a, a, a competency gap. You didn't have a learning problem. So, so the key thing, uh, there, in all things training, there are two um, most important aspects. And the first aspect is the one I just told you about. Needs analysis. Needs assessment. And, and the second, and, and it's not the second, it's, it's equally important. And an equally important um, aspect of the training beyond the evaluation. You do a training intervention. The, the individuals get thrown into the, uh, the, the operation. And, and, and when, as soon as they go back to that operation, there's a need for reinforcement. We must reinforce the learning. Why? because we want to turn the learning uh, into habituation. And how long does it take to develop a habit? Uh, it takes about 21 days. That's, you know, that, that's pretty much the truth. Uh, so, uh, so if a person learns something new and they, uh, and, and, and they practice it in the training program, and you, you'll see a, a two different templates, uh, one for knowledge training, you know, stuff in your brain, and, and the other for skills training, um, um, eye-hand coordination, um, uh, technical skills, uh, mechanical technical skills. And, and there are other categories, but those are the two main branches. And, and when the person comes out of that, they, if, if, the, if the trainer, trainer was uh, effective, um, the person will come out in a state of um, Conscious competence. And I give you the four, four stages of competence I give you in the book. Uh, unconscious competence, conscious competence, uh, unconscious incompetence, and conscious incompetence. Um, uh, unconscious incompetence is the person doesn't know what he doesn't know, what he needs to know. And, and conscious incompetence is the person doesn't know it, but he knows he needs to know it. And, and uh, the third phase is conscious competence, is, is when a person uh, has, has just gotten the skills but needs to practice, needs to practice. And then unconscious competence is when the person can do it uh, without thinking, doesn't use the linear brain process to do it. Uh, they, they do it automatically, uh, just like us driving cars. You know, that, that would be an example. Unconscious competence at work. So how do you get to that state? You say, we release them. The, the training program's over. Uh, they have these skills. They've demonstrated that they have these skills and they have this knowledge. Um, so now it's time to release them. And we put them in there. And, and if we don't continue the intervention, those new skills will, will fall away. And why will that happen? Because it takes effort. It's something new. So the human condition. If, if, if it takes effort to do something, and, and, and if you already know another way of doing something, we'll go right back to doing it that way because that's the easiest way. That's our old habit. So what reinforcement does, and it's, and it's not the trainer. It's the trainer in collaboration with the operating manager. Um, they work collaboratively to reinforce the, the, the skills or the knowledge um, that was learned on a daily basis uh, for a period of 21 days. Believe it or not, this really works. 21 days, and uh, and and that at that point, 
they will habituate the problem. Think uh, a common scenario, it's a new point of sale system. Uh, you start off with, uh, in a restaurant, let's say, um, you know, you start off, you have the old system, now you get the new system. Everybody loves the old system a lot now because you brought in a new system and it's fine. They don't know it. So now, you know, you have to overcome the resistance. You have to, uh, you know, make it fun for them to learn the new system. You, you have to coach them through it. You have to hold their hands, uh, you know, all the, all the techniques that you use. They start using the new system. They're, they're clumsy with it, and, and, and now it's time to go live. To go live with just that system, yeah, you've probably seen that happen, but that's not the way it should be. You should do a parallel run. So you got the new system, and it's live. Do you just say, okay, use it? No. You have a coach standing next to the pre-check machine, and the coach is helping them, letting them try, but won't let them uh, stall. You know, they'll they'll coach you through uh, the process. Next thing you know. 21 days later or so, they're walking up to the thing and blah, 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 and you're using it as a, you know, like second nature. That's what a habit is, it's second nature. And and then the machine goes down, and they figure out how to use the old one. Oh, that's, that's just the joke. But it, well, actually, I've seen that happen. But uh, that's what reinforcement is all about. So needs analysis, assessment, needs analysis, and reinforcement, the two most important aspects of training. So what happens in the middle? In the middle, you have um, program design. That's that's a skilled trainer that does that, a training professional. Program design, program development could be the skilled trainer in conjunction with an operations manager, or just just the skilled trainer. So so they design it. That's that's the shell. That's the template, and 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 then they they develop it module by module by module. Um, those of you who used to teach elementary school or K through 12. Learn lesson plans. So that's the development phase. Then there's the delivery phase, and, and there's a template for that that's in the chapter. And and, and then the evaluation, um, which is just really a, a means of under of knowing uh, if the intended um, outcomes objectives uh, were achieved. And then finally, they go into reinforcement mode, and that that requires uh, collaborative uh, opportunities. Now. Skills training, knowledge training, basic categories, administrative training, uh, that's, that's just uh, uh, procedures for uh, uh, forms and, and, uh, and administrative types of functions. You have a new trainer, if you put a new trainer in your department, that's where you start. You know, you, you, you can't mess that up. You know, it's, it's, it's really straightforward. And, um, but my favorite uh, is, has, was, and still is. Uh, management development training. So if you have you, could, you have training uh, for individuals to maintain their skill levels, learn their skill levels, and then maintain those. And then you have training. We're going to talk about this, I think, in chapter eleven or something. And then you have training to develop them for promotable positions, and and that's called development. That's a development program. And 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 my favorite. Uh, Types of training were, were management development programs, and and and, and that's where uh, individuals are learning um, are learning what well, are learning new skills. And we just have to say, well, in a lot of cases, they're learning the skills they should have had first of all for their position. But then uh, we teach them uh, the skills they need uh, to have to. Uh, to go up the the, uh, the organizational chart and have higher levels of responsibility, and I really think we're out of time. So uh, that's the thing to remember. Remember two most important aspects: needs analysis and and reinforcement. Why is needs analysis important? Because we need to know if there's a competency gap. What's a competency gap? A competency gap or a learning gap? Same thing. Competency gap or a learning gap is a people problem. <clears throat> a people problem. Um, that has to do with lack of skills or ability um, or knowledge. And, and, and then what's reinforcement? Reinforcement is habituating the new, learn, the new learning. What are the steps in the middle? Um, you read the book and you'll see, uh, see in the next clip.